We're now joined by a guy, Sam Hookstra, uh, who uh, has a special uh, part in Michigan history, and he may know this, he may not know this, uh, but the longest standing freestyle record in the history of the state of Michigan was Eric Matuzak's 100 freestyle record that stood from 1994 until 2009, when this fellow right here jumped in the pool and uh, took that record down. A couple of weeks ago, we got a chance to talk with Morgan Priestley, who took down Matuzak's uh, 200 freestyle record, which had stood for 14 years. Sam took down a record that stood for 15, and when he did that, he etched his place in history and uh, secured his place on my list among the greatest swimmers in, in Michigan history. Sam, thanks for joining me today, man. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Awesome. So I want to start with you in a place that I start with a lot of guys, and I already know that you have a much different answer to this question than a lot of the swimmers that we've spoken to, and I think inherently makes your story an interesting one. Can you take me back to when swimming was introduced to you as a sport? Not Maybe not swim lessons and when you learned to swim, but when you dedicated yourself and arrived to the sport of swimming. Well, yeah, like like uh, a lot of people, um, I I did swim from a from a young age, but like you said, it, it was not a serious thing by any means. Um, I played every other sport competitively, uh, but swimming swimming was the fun one, the the thing that we did in the backyard uh, all summer long. Um, uh, but um, I would say. So I, I, I kind of followed, I had two older brothers who I uh, looked up to quite a bit um, and wanted to be just like them. Um, and my brother Jake got into diving in middle school. Uh, he's four years older. Um, and so when I got into middle school and had the opportunity, I tried diving, quickly learned that um, a, a seventh grader who was I was probably 510 at the time <laughs> uh, lanky as can be probably shouldn't be on the diving board um, and so uh, the swim coach obviously saw me and was like hey you need to try some relays uh, got me on a couple of relays and then in eighth grade I finally decided okay maybe maybe I need to be racing all the time um, and so that was kind of the this, this start to my competitive swim career, uh, as competitive as middle school swimming can be. Um, and then freshman year uh, is when I really got, got the itch. Um, I still played water polo all throughout, um, but swimming quickly became my thing. Um, my freshman year, at Granville High School, um, our captains that year were John Bergsma and Matt Rose, um, pretty awesome swimmers in their, in their own right and, and just amazing guys and amazing leaders. Um, and I just looked up to them so much. Uh, and then at the end of my freshman year, I got the opportunity to be on the 200 medley relay and the 200 freestyle relay at the state meet um, at the University of Michigan, which was at, also the last year the state meet was at the University of Michigan. Um, and we, and that was, so that would have been 2006, I believe, uh, March of 2006. Um, and we actually, so we traveled, the state meets Friday, Saturday, right? Uh, we traveled Thursday and went to the pool immediately. And guess who was training? It was Phelps, it was Peter Vanderke. It was, I mean, I think Davis was still there. I, uh, there was just so many guys uh, at the time training there, uh, getting ready for, you know, in that, away Olympic cycle um I mean that was obviously the like all all those guys were there right and so I think it was only um 
I want to say it was only Phelps in the water. He was like training by himself that day or something. Um, but uh, he was, I mean, it was just, we were obviously awestruck. The, the stuff that he was, just the way that he was swimming. And like that, and then the state meet happened. And yeah, you talked about, I'm pretty sure um, Morgan was his, maybe a senior that year or junior something like that there was guys like show coba i mean it was like it was a big meet it was super fast i was a freshman um and it was just quite an experience um and i mean from that point on it was like swimming swimming is it for me that's that's what i want to do that's amazing i i can imagine the impact that being able to see Phelps up close at age 14 or 15 would have on, on any young swimmer. Um, before we jump forward and kind of stay with that, that line, I want to go back for a second. So tell me about the other sports that kind of had your interest as a young guy before swimming. Um, so again, my brother uh, got into water polo pretty early, which was kind of rare for, for, West Michigan around that time. It was kind of just taking off Granville at the time um, that my brother got into it. The high school team had, they were really good, just really big guys. Uh, I don't know if you, you know these names. Chris Postumus was like, he was the guy. Eric Postumus, his brother too. But Chris in that area, I mean, he was just, he was like 6'7". 240 in high school <laughs> just he's a basketball player too I don't know but um uh so water polo started to take off and my brother got into it and so I even started water polo in fifth grade so I started polo before um swimming uh competitively um and so I just stuck with that but even before that it was always I mean I was playing sports year round it was Baseball in the summer, football in the fall, um, basketball in the winter, um, so baseball in summer and spring. I played tennis. Um, I actually did inline speed skating for a little while, uh, which I absolutely loved. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, you you name it, golf. I I, I played it. So um, I just. I just love to compete. And if I wasn't doing something, I was completely bored. Like I just could not have any downtime whatsoever. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I mean, I just love to be athletic and that's, that's what it was all about for me. I'm really interested in the, the water polo part of it. Whenever I talk to swimmers who also played water polo, because it, in many cases, and there's probably no greater example than Matt Biondi, who was able to kind of combine that um, water polo success into great swimming back in the 80s. Um, and you don't hear as many of those stories, you know, today as maybe you used to three or four decades ago. But I certainly have heard some examples. How did water polo help keep you in the water and help you as a swimmer? Yeah. Um... As a coach now, it's tough. It is. I, I think it takes. I, te I think it takes a certain type of athlete to be able to do both really well. Um, I mean, for one thing, water polo makes you tough. And I was actually a goalie for most of my career, which is kind of interesting because I was the fast one, right? Um, but I was in the goal. Um, but I think just because of my again just my natural athleticism um, and my length. Um, I think it goalie just fit for me. Um, obviously there's, you know, strength components. It, it really does strengthen your legs. Um, I think I actually could have been a pretty decent breaststroker had I not taken off and freestyle so well, um, but I never really gave it too much of a chance. Uh, because I just had that my my egg beater kick was was pretty good and um, yeah so but yeah I think just like the mental toughness obviously water polo is one of the toughest sports in the world um, it's brutal it's it's uh, just so physically exhausting and demanding um, 
it really does, I think, give you that mental edge for when you get into the into the training pool for swimming. Um, but <laughs> as a coach now, you know, in Michigan, polos in the fall, polos the the three critical months leading up to that high school swim season. Um, and you know, I look back at my career and I kind of wonder a little bit like, man, if, you know, if I had dedicated those three months before the swim season, you know, where could I have been earlier? Um, but obviously I don't, I don't regret any of it. Obviously it all turned out pretty okay. Um, and I, I, I love, I still play water polo. I love it. Um, I even played a season at Michigan. You mentioned your athleticism and in, in your length, and obviously, I know you're a you're a big guy. Uh, when you swam in high school, tell me about your height and weight, and kind of what how you were built physically. So um, I was always big. I never had like any growth spurts. Um, I I just kind of I came out big and just stayed big and just grew gradually, which I think really helped uh, with with that athleticism piece because I know a lot of guys go through that, like, growth spur somewhere between, like, eighth and junior year-ish, and they get all awkward. I did have, like, one awkward year in seventh grade, my football season. I, like, could not catch a single – I was a wide receiver. I couldn't catch a single pass. It was just an awful year. I hated everything about it. But then in like eighth grade, I caught every pass. So it's like, I don't know. I did have that one year. But for the most part, I just grew gradually. Um, always had like a pretty healthy amount of muscle uh, that just kind of developed. I never lifted weights in high school. Uh, I didn't start lifting weights until college. But for some reason, my body just like to put on muscle as I grew. Um, I remember guys, there was always rumors on M Live, like, oh, Hookstra's, Hookstra's got to be taking something. And I'm just like over there laughing because I literally, I knew so many guys who lifted weights and I on it, we didn't lift any weights. So um, it was always a, a laugh when I saw those comments. Um, but uh, yeah, I was probably six six foot in as a freshman, and then just grew like an inch a year. And then I think I was like six four senior year. Um, probably went from one fifty five as a freshman up to I think I graduated around one eighty five, one ninety somewhere in there. So I was. I was pretty big. <laughs> if I've learned anything in the last couple of weeks, it's that the M Live chats were a cesspool. Uh, Randy Lamb just told me a couple of stories that he, about how he wished he'd never come across the the M Live uh, chats back in the back in his time back in two thousand. So I, I've learned from talking to you very quickly. It didn't get any better in the next decade. No, it was pretty wild. That's great. Uh, so jumping back to that freshman year that you mentioned, uh, as we were talking here, I, I took a quick glance at the state meet results. You know, I'm not going to say you set the world on fire and did something nobody else had ever done, but you went 21:54 on your free relay as a freshman, which in context with the idea that you kind of already told us, you really hadn't come into swimming until about the last year or two that's pretty good, right? I mean, yeah. so one of the questions that, that I would uh, want to ask you is, you made it clear, you know, and seeing Phelps and those guys that day that that was a mental breakthrough uh, or a commitment breakthrough that this is what I want to do. But I'm curious if there had been moments prior to that as you were becoming a guy that could go 21-5, you know, on his relay at the state meet as a freshman. Um, that kind of convinced you earlier that I, I could be pretty good at this. Are there breakthrough meets or races or, you know, anything that stands out to you, you know, that kind of helped you realize 
also I want to pursue this? Oh man. Um, well, any, just broadly, any chance I got to be on a relay was, was the most amazing thing to me. And that continued, I mean, you see that continue through my senior year of college. Uh, really, <laughs> to be honest, that continued to my last competitive meet, which was not too long ago, uh, where I got to swim on a relay with some of my West Ottawa swimmers uh, at sectionals. And I hopped off a time that I didn't even think I had in myself. So we can, again, get to that later. But uh, yeah, anytime I got an opportunity to be on a relay, um, I, I took full advantage and I, I loved every second of it. Um, there were a couple of moments uh, before that, my freshman year, um, that I kind of proved to myself that I, I think I, I had what it took to be fast. Um, and it may not be in the sense that people are thinking, but um, the, during a dual meet, uh, it was a close meet. Um, we had, I was on the four free relay with Matt and John and those, you know, seniors. Um, and I, uh, I, I lost my goggles or my, they actually filled up with water on the start. And I went in to that first turn full speed and we had these nasty metal gutters and I smacked my heels and, uh, I had, I didn't know how bad it was. I just kept swimming. I didn't swim very fast, but I stayed, I like kept us close, right? I, I kept us in the race um, and we ended up winning the relay. Um, and come to find, I, I crawl out of the pool and uh, I had split my heel like wide open to the bone. Um, ended up, uh, it was a clean cut, so it wasn't bleeding until I actually got, I stood up and started walking. The trainer, the, our, it was so weird. So our pool is on the second floor of our high school. Um, the training room where the athletic trainer is, is on the first floor, kind of underneath the pool. He said he heard the hit from his office, and he came up <laughs> right away. Um, and he kind of helped me down. Uh, but nine stitches across the back of my heel. But that kind of, and we, and, and I didn't know we won, um, but afterwards they told me, and that kind of like, okay, like I have, I think I have the toughness. I'm super raw. Like my, oh my goodness, my strokes. You mentioned I went that time on that relay at state. Like it was all just athleticism and just strength, and there was nothing good about it <laughs> for for a while um but just moments like that just kind of I proved to myself that I think I I think I can do this I think I can be pretty good at this well you said for a while we figured it out in the next year here so uh, just to, <laughs> just to give yeah 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 so just to give a little bit of uh, background as we go into this for anybody that's not uh, familiar with you so you, you have a big breakthrough as a sophomore you go from a swimmer that's a relay only guy as a freshman to you are the number one seed in the 50 freestyle going into finals uh at the division one state meet your sophomore year i think you go 2109 uh in prelims uh to grab the number one seed uh, you also finished third in the 100. You play a huge role on a couple of relays. I see you go 20-point mid um, on one of your relays. So you go from a guy that doesn't even compete individually as a freshman to clear-cut one of the couple best 50 freestylers in the state, probably one of the top 500 freestyles at any class in the state. So this is a huge year for you. Um, I'm also interested to kind of gauge with you as we talk about your sophomore year, um, if there was a level of disappointment 
for you in coming so close to winning uh, the 50 to have that number one seed. I see the swimmer that won the 50 went 2105, slightly faster than you were the day before. So maybe maybe that helped a little bit. But anytime that somebody is that close to something um, really good, I'm sure that that they want it. So I'm interested in in hearing uh, kind of your memories of your sophomore year breakthrough and that state meet as well. Yeah, I, I I definitely always talk about the sophomore year as as the breakthrough year, um, and and really that was probably the point where um, I was like all all in after that. Right before I was like, okay, I'm still playing water polo, I'm still playing baseball, I'm taking time off. Um, training in the summer, I did, but it wasn't too serious. Um, but after that, that meet for sure, I was, I was all in. Um, so yeah, leading up, you know, after freshman year, like I said, I was committed. Um, I, I did start training club after freshman year. Uh, I kind of bounced around a little bit. Granville didn't have a ton to offer. Jenison had a pretty solid club team that I trained with over the summer. Didn't end up loving it, but, you know, it kept me in the water, focused on some of those technical things that I really needed to work on, um, just cleaned up some stuff. Um, the other big thing for me, fresh or sophomore year, I think was the breathing. So my, my breath, uh, was really slow. It, I had a pretty high stroke rate. Um, and every time I breathe, my stroke just slowed down and so much. And I was breathing, freshman year, I was probably breathing four or five times. <laughs> um, and, and Jeff Burgess, my, my, my high school coach, um, we pretty much decided, hey, you know, we stop breathing and we drop a ton of time, like bottom line. Um, and so I just kind of made the commitment from the beginning of sophomore year. I'm not going to breathe. I know it's slowing me down. I'm just not going to breathe. Um, and it did slow me down. <laughs> Actually, it slowed me down just because, I mean, getting used to that, not having that oxygen, uh, that second 25, I would, I would die and just, I mean, it was ugly, but I just committed to it and eventually it just became second nature and I never thought about breathing in a 50 free ever again. Um, and, and then just obviously those other pieces of just, you know, how much water am I pulling and, 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 you know, how much drag am I creating with, with my arms and, and let's focus on my kick and, and, and my turn was a big one that year as well. My turn was awful um, freshman year and, and, and sophomore year, we, I started to figure it out. Um, and then I think that was actually the year as well where I switched uh, my lead foot on my start. I was starting with my left foot um, and I switched to my right foot. I'm, I'm right, right side dominant. And so I put my, Jeff was like, hey, let's put your, dominant foot first and um so it was just all those little things that could just kind of add it up to um being fat faster you know um and then so <laughs> that prelim swim um i don't I, if you i don't know if i can find any pictures um but there's a really there's one really great picture of someone took it of of the start of that prelim 50 free and i <laughs> actually anticipated the start and so i i i probably could have been disqualified to be honest because it was so spot on i i if they had reaction timing pads at the time my reaction time probably would have been like 0.2 which is ridiculous. I mean, so the picture is me, I'm fully extended with like my big toe on the block while everyone is still like arms down, but off the block, both feet on the block. Like I'm just 
way out already in front of everyone. Um, and so that definitely contributed to, I think, that super fast time. But at the same time, it also like proved to myself, hey, I can be 21-0 and hey, I can compete with everybody else here. So um, yeah, I kind of I kind of got lucky in that sense. Um, and then as far as, you know, not winning the final, I never, before that point, I never had, I never believed that I was one of the best. I never believed, I don't think that I, like, I could, you know, be in the top or I could win. So just um, getting there, uh, I was really happy. And I was so nervous. I, I was about to nervous. ask you, I wanted to ask you, how'd you sleep that night? That Friday <laughs> terrible. night? How terrible. <laughs> I I don't think I went to bed until maybe 1130 or something like that. But um, I was, yeah, I'm not a nervous person. I get way more nervous as a coach than I ever did as a swimmer. I, I'm just not a nervous person. And so, but that was like the one time where I was like, oh my goodness, I, this is, this is awful. I don't want to feel this ever again. Like, and my coach, obviously my teammates, my coach, we're all talk, they're all talking, right? And I'm like, oh, you, you're the top seed of the, my family. But um, I'm like, oh, this is not good. But, and I mean, I did, I did well in finals. And, and those two, I think I got third in finals, right? I mean, those, who was it? Chris Bagley and, is that his name? I don't know. Chris it's like Bagley. a brother, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh i i was i was happy those guys were so nice and um i was happy for them you know they were seniors and i i was a freshman i was like you know what i obviously i wanted to win my my competitive nature i was disappointed um but if anything it just proved i proved to myself that i could contend with with the best so for the record, and just so that you can hopefully sleep tonight, you were second in the final. Oh, was I second? Yeah, you okay. were second. Okay. Get that. Get yourself that point back. You earned it. All right. 